This is a short video on the virus herpes simplex, which affects the genitals and causes a sexually transmitted infection, herpes. So what kind of infection is this? Herpes simplex is a sexually transmitted infection caused by a virus. It's an underlying infection, meaning that the symptoms may not always be present. The pathogen remains in the body and can be passed on. So what pathogen causes it? Herpes is caused by the virus herpes simplex which is an enveloped, double-stranded DNA virus. It's a member of the herpes viridae family, has an icosahedral capsule with virions, and its size can vary from 120 nanometers to 300 nanometers. There are two types of herpes simplex viruses, and they're based on their structures, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is known for causing cold sores, whereas type 2 is most commonly associated with genital warts, though both types are capable of causing either infection. So who does this infection affect? The infection is most prevalent in black Africans, in particular black females. However, in white people, males are twice as likely to get the, the sexually transmitted infection than females. Over 40s are the most likely age group to acquire the disease, but the CDC has seen a marked increase of cases in most races between the ages of 20 and 29. So what are the symptoms of herpes simplex? People can contract painful blisters, as seen in the photo. They can become quite inflamed and the genital regions can become itchy, with many people finding it painful to urinate. Nausea can occur in more extreme cases. How is herpes simplex transmitted? The infection is transmitted through sexual contact, both heterosexual and homosexual, involving the genital regions. People should be aware that once you contract the infection, you'll always have it. Just because you're not showing symptoms doesn't mean you can't transmit the disease. The sites of infection are the genital regions of both males and females. So what is the incidence of this infection in Ireland? This graph was made by the HSE, recording the notified cases of genital herpes in 2015. 1,274 cases were notified, with a crude incidence rate of 27.8 people per 100,000 of the population. As we can see, there's a higher uh, crude incident rate in women than men, but that's down to women having soft vaginal tissue, which pathogens, pathogens may adhere to during sexual activity. So what does this mean? It's clear the infection is rising. 1,235 cases were notified in 2014 compared to the 1,274 in 2015. But why? Well, it's becoming less taboo to get screened for STIs, which is great. And it could also be argued that stigma around women using contraceptions, such as the pill, is loosening, which is also great. But this could result in physical barriers like the condom being ruled out, which lessens the chances of contracting the infection. So what is the diagnosis of the infection? The first thing a sufferer should do is go straight to the doctor for a physical exam. Antibodies against the virus of both herpes simplex, virus 1 and 2, can be detected by blood serology tests. Swaps are the most common samples taken and are tested by PCR methods. The viral DNA can also be detected in urine, uh, also in rectal and conjunctival swabs, cerebro cerebrospinal fluid and blood samples. What's the treatment of the infection? There is no known cure for this infection. Lessening the symptoms is the only basis of treatment. Common medication used to treat the infections are acyclovir, famisiclovir, and valisiclovir. These medications can help in reducing transmission of the infection and can lower the intensity of the outbreaks as well. They're provided as oral pills, creams, or in serious cases, injections may be required from a doctor. Complications associated with herpes simplex virus 2. For women, complications arise in pregnancy where miscarriages can occur. Inhibition of fetal growth or early labour can also occur. Transmission to the baby occurs in the uterus during vaginal delivery if the mother is presenting with an outbreak. Babies can also contract diseases such as meningitis as a result. Kissing newborns is a common route of transmission. It would be advised not to kiss newborns if you have had a cold sore recently or are suffering from one. Ocular herpes can lead to vision loss. And HIV and HSV2 usually co-infect, which increases the severity of the virus, which makes transmission easier. 
so how to prevent the infection and the spread of this infection. With regards to skin-to-skin -to -skin transmission, condoms and dental dams are highly recommended. Limiting your number of sexual partners is also effective in pre preventing transmission. It should also be noted that chemical spermicides do not prevent HSV2. Keeping on top of personal hygiene is also a very effective way of preventing the transmission of any STI, including herpes simplex virus. Touching blisters can lead to transmission and is not recommended. Wiping toilet seats is also very important. Men who are circumcised are less likely to contract or transmit the virus due to the unlikelihood of bacteria being able to multiply on a circumcised penis. Doctors, nurses and dentists can contract herpes wicklow, a painful skin infection caused by herpes simplex virus 2. Close contact sports such as people who play rugby can contract and transmit the infection without sexual contact being involved.